Welcome to a code report solution video, a comparison video of my three favorite languages, BQN, WIWA, and APL. And in today's video, we're going to be implementing the formula for standard deviation in each of these languages a couple different ways, at least in BQN and WIWA. And the reason that we are implementing standard deviation is because as I've been working my way through the Strange Loop 2023 videos, at least the ones that are of interest to me, I recently watched a long Strange Loop by Alex Miller, as you can see in the middle of the screen. And Alex Miller, if you don't know, is the creator and main organizer of the Strange Loop conference, which had its last edition this year. And because I watched this talk, I got recommended the following talk from a virtual conference just under one year ago, depending on when you're watching this. It took place in December of 2022. And this video was good, as well as the last one, but the best video of the three videos that I watched that led me to making this YouTube video was recommended in the top or lower right-hand corner of the screen, which is a video by James Gosling, infamously the creator of the Java language. And it was entitled Thoughts on Language Evolution. I absolutely love programming language talks, especially ones that talk about, you know, what makes a language successful or not. And James definitely touches on that in his talk. And at one point, he's talking about the familiarity or readability in terms of, you know, introducing novel things that people might find surprising. And of course, he ends up mentioning my favorite language, APL. And he specifically has a line of APL code that is calculating the standard deviation of an array X. And I was a little bit surprised on this piece of code. It was probably copy and pasted from some paper that was you know, implemented in the 70s or 80s before they had trains. And I'm a little bit surprised by the fact that there are assignments to local variables that are only used once. Typically, when you assign to a local mid expression, it's because you need to reuse that local. However, the first thing I did was go and type this expression into the remote IDE ride, which is powered by dialog APL at the back end, and proceeded to check if it was right and then refactor it to a point free expression, which is what I'm going to walk you through now. So this is the exact expression from James Gosling's presentation, except for the fact that I've renamed the function SD from SD to SDEV which stands for standard deviation, a little less ambiguous. The first thing we need to do though is change all of our X's to omegas and put this in braces in order to make it a function because previously it's just an expression that relies on there being an array X here and I don't have an array X, so I wanna make this a function. The next thing we're gonna do is get rid of these locals. So I assume T stands for total because we're summing up the elements in our array omega and then we are assigning the next thing to AV, which I assume stands for average because we're dividing that sum by the number of elements in our array. We don't need to do this, as I mentioned before, because we're not making any references to T or AV. I'm not sure if this is a readability thing. I'm not sure what APL experts would say about this code, but I don't like it. Let's get rid of the T and then let's get rid of the AV. And now at this point, this might be your preferred definition of standard deviation in APL. And I should note, there are multiple definitions of different standard deviations. There's sample standard deviation, there's student T, et cetera, et cetera. We're just using the one that came from James Gosling's, which does not you know, decrement a one off of N when we're doing the denominator division. We're just taking the example from James Gosling's presentation. So at this point, you might be liking this the best, but we are gonna turn this into point free. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to make use of the most famous three train of all time in APL, and that is average. You can see in the middle here, we have plus slash divide row. Row is what they used for length before they had tally and uh, dialog APL. So we can combine this all into a three train, get rid of one of our omegas, and we now have the most famous three train of all in APL in our expression here. Next thing we can do is we can turn this three train into a five train. This three train for average forms a unary function. So that's gonna be the right function of our outer three train. We're gonna use minus as our binary operation and replace omega with identity. And so this is gonna give us a five train. Doesn't actually save us any characters, but it enables us to keep on building up trains. So we had a three train, now we've got a five train. Now we're gonna have a seven train by moving the power to the power of two over to the left, note that because the two is now on the left of our power operator, we need to make use of the W combinator, AKA commute, AKA swap. 
And now we have a seven train and we can turn this seven train into an eight train by combining the plus slash AKA sum into the parentheses. And now we have an eight train. So now we only have two more things to do at this point, because we have an eight train and the next thing we want to form is a three train with the divides row. We aren't actually going to put the divides row on the left because, because this is an even train, an eight train, it's not going to form without parentheses, a three train. So we're going to leave the parentheses, move the divide row inside, get rid of one of the omegas. Now we have an eight train as the left unary function of our outer three train. And last but not least, we move our to the power of 0 0.5, aka square root, with a commute operator, aka swap operator, aka C combinator, and we are done. Last thing to do, because we only have one omega on the right, is to get rid of the braces, get rid of the omega, and get rid of the last set of parentheses, and this is our final solution. Much nicer than what James Gosling had in his slide, however, like I said, some people don't prefer the tacit code. They prefer all the parentheses. So maybe that first version that deleted the T and the AV was preferable for some of you. However, I find this the nicest, at least in APL. However, now we are going to move to BQN and things just get even more exciting from here. So here we are in BQN pad and we are now going to build up this solution from scratch. First things first, we need to do a plus reduction to get our sum. Second thing we need to do is to call length and we're gonna use make pair for the moment. And this is gonna basically return us both the sum and the length. And if we replace this by division, we now have our average function. Next thing we need to do is we need to subtract our average from each of the values in our original list. So one way we can do this is what we did in APL, which is by going from a three train to a five train, which is nice, but we can do better in BQN because this is the I combinator, AKA the identity function. And when we have one of our unary functions in a monadic fork, AKA a three train in BQN as identity, that this corresponds either to the sigma or the S combinator. And the S combinator is what we want in this case, which we can spell with the monadic after. And this now does the exact same thing. It technically costs us one extra character, but we're gonna leave it like this because of where we are going and the symmetry that we are going to have. So. Now that we have the differences between our original list and our average, we want to square these. We're gonna do this by calling the two power. And once again, this is doing two to the power of when what we want is we want to the power of two, which means we need to call the C combinator, AKA commute, AKA swap. I think they believe, I believe they call it swap in BQN. And now we need to sum up these values and divide them by the length of our list, which is just average at this point. So we can actually, just call average, and this is gonna get us exactly what we want. And so now at this point, we just need to make a call to square root, which I think might involve calling nothing as well. It does indeed. And if we do this, now we have our answer. So this is very beautiful, but it's gonna get even more beautiful, folks. And we've done this a couple times before, but we're doing to the power of two, there's a couple different ways to spell this. Another one, if we throw a nothing in here and replace this power with multiply, get the right nothing. This is another way of squaring that is just calling the W combinator, AKA self on multiplication. When you multiply with a number, with the same number, that's just squaring. These are the two different ways that I've shown in prior videos on how to calculate a square. However, there is another way, which is the following. This is, this is pretty crazy folks. It is square root inverse. Wow, look at that, look at that. And it wasn't until I realized, cause I saw that there was a square root here and then I realized, oh wow, if we inverted that, we would have square root inverse, AKA square and then square. And when you have this pattern where you are applying a function and then it's inverse, that's when you can make use of the combinator under. So we can delete this we can add under, and we need to parenthesize this because of the way that our modifiers parse left to right. And now, look at that, look at that. Under, and technically, we can go back to any one of our definitions of square now. We can go back to the multiply with the W combinator. We can go back to uh, our power operator uh, with a partial application of two, um, and technically, if we want to spell this the way that we were doing it before, we would go like this, and then you can do it like that. 
which is nice. But anyways, I'm going to stick with, I'm going to stick with square root inverse because I think it looks so cool and it's visually representative of what we're going to do afterwards, the square. I think technically BQN crate, because I went after I, you know, went through all this, I went and checked what, what bacon crate does and they do the multiplication with the W combinator. However, this then leads you to realize that look at this, we've got, we've got one of these symmetric solutions where we have average on the left and the right. So let's, let's put this in a little comment. But what we can do here is we can assign average and then we can type this in, which is pretty, pretty phenomenal. And what we can do now, what we can do now is we can, we can put, we can turn this function into a one modifier. Look at how the color changed folks. Absolutely beautiful. Similar to Weewa's autocomplete. And if we now turn this into a one modifier, having a hard time typing here. Now we can come down here and pass average as a function to this. And we could even we could even get crazy here. Why would you want to do this? I don't know. I don't know why, but you could you could make um, the minus operation in this uh, and we need to put this. And so note that similar to changing a function to a one modifier, AKA a higher order function, change the color, changing a one modifier to a two modifier. And the way that you indicate this is just with the preceding underscore and uh, suffix underscore as well. But uh, you know, this isn't necessarily a good idea. I'm just showing you what you can do. And so if we, if we get the, get rid of the, the G now, put this back here. And what we're, what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna delete this, get rid of this, put this here. I believe we have to parenthesize this and then turn this back into a function. And there we go, folks. Two different ways to calculate this. And actually, this isn't even correct. We need to get rid of the minus there. Absolutely mind-blowing. We're making use of under, making use of the S combinator, AKA monadic after. And we have removed the redundancy. And note that this is actually one character shorter. Pretty freaking fantastic. Love it. All right, let's move on to Weewa now. Last but not least, and we're going to explore Weewa and see if we can do the same thing. But first things first, let's just code up a naive quick solution. So we are going to do a summation. And then we are going to duplicate. Then we are going to swap to get our array at the bottom. Then we're going to call length. Then we're going to call divide. And that's going to give us our average. Now we need to do the same thing that we did in BQN and in APL. We need to do a prefix minus with the original array. So duplicate the array at the beginning, prefix minus. And now we need to do a power two to square. And at this point, we've got a couple different options. But what we want to do is we want to sum these values up and then divide them by the length. So we calculated the length here. So if we put a duplicate after this, it's gonna mess up the rest. So one of the tricks you can do is you can just parenthesize everything that you need to apply and then dip this and we're gonna get the values we want now. So that's gonna pop an operation off, apply a function and then pop the thing that you popped off back on. And now if we call div, we can then call square root and we're good to go. So this is our first solution. However, I'm not a huge fan of this dip and in parentheses. So one thing we can notice is that if we get rid of the duplicate here, we actually have, you know, this is getting this, uh, our sum here, but we actually have the array of the length that we want here. So if we duplicate this, we can just do the swap len trick again and call div and then call square root. So this is cool, saves us a character. However, there's some Weewa programmers that are screaming at multiple levels in their heads right now because this pattern of duplicating, swapping, and we're calling two unary functions, length and sum, is there's a combinator for that. And the combinator, and don't worry, there's another combinator that's even better. We're getting to that in a sec. If we get rid of our swap and then use bracket, this is gonna apply two functions, length and sum, to the two arrays at the top of our stack. So if we do this, boom. So we're, we're not actually saving any characters here. We are just setting ourselves up for what we're gonna do next, which is we are applying two functions, length and sum, to the top two arrays in our stack. But in this case, 
the top two arrays in our stack are always the same because we're doing duplicate. And we have a combinator for that, which is fork. So if you are applying two different operations to the same value, you can delete the duplicate and just call fork. So the bracket and fork, very much related, enables you to get rid of a couple duplicates, and it's fantastic, folks. So that is our fourth solution. My favorite, but let's see if we can do, because note that we've got some length fork divide. We've got this twice, here and here. And we can, we can do the same thing if we want by copying this, calling this average, calling this average. And that's going to work. However, I don't want to call this average. I want to do it in line similar to what we did in BQN. So let us, and actually, we want to go to put our, fork, our forks back. We want to make sure we save that. So let's copy this again. And we're not going to get to a final solution here, but it's still cool to play around. So here, if we parenthesize what is average, it's going to put this function on the stack. And now we basically want to duplicate that function because we're going to need it a second time. And so at this point, we want to call our average function on one of our arrays, and we can do a dip call. So this is call, this is dip, boom. Now we've gotten the average of our values. And at this point, we want to do a dip again. We want to pop off our function because we don't need it yet. And we need to do a um, minus to the power of 2. So we're going to do a power 2 minus. And that should get us the squares of our differences. And it's at this point that things fail for me because I just want to apply the function that's at the top of the stack to our next array. However, when we do this, it gives us this cannot infer function signature call with unknown function. So I'm probably just not enough of a, a, a wee wah you know, developer. I'm definitely not an expert. Um, so there might be a way to do this. If you know how, leave a comment in the description down below. If you have an improvement to either my APL solution or my BQN solution or a solution in another language that you think is more elegant than these, be sure to, once again, comment in the description down below. And that brings us back to the beginning. My three favorite languages, BQN, WeWa, and APL, super fun to explore implementing the standard deviation formula in each of these languages. I absolutely love the insight that I had because I realized with square root in my expression that I could express square as square root inverse, which then led me to the realization that you could do the same under trick that you could a couple people mentioned in the implementation of the Pythagorean theorem that you could just do under square in solving that problem, which was fantastic. Thank you to those who commented in the section down below. And yeah, slightly different solutions in each of these languages. As mentioned before, if you have your own solution, leave a comment in the description down below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed, and we will see you in the next video.